If you ever wanted a raised garden bed because you have kids that are trying to dig in everything, well, here's my video on how I did it, all the problems, everything that I had to go through to get it done. All right, so first off, I wanted to spend as little as possible on this project. My neighbor redid her deck, so I took all the scrap wood I could from her that was still good. And this was the hardest part, was taking out all the nails and making sure that everything was pretty much clean, especially when I was just trying to bang it out. When I then realized that I do have a reciprocating saw, I can never say that properly, reciprocating saw? Yeah, re reciprocating. Anyway, um, I damn near destroyed this blade, but this is why you get a ton of these things, and you can see I got it down to the nub with all these rusty old blades. Now, um, you have to get all the wood cut to size. I like to do that first, at least that's what everybody says. These are some two by eights. They're really, really thick. They're perfect for withstanding the amount of weight that are gonna be on the side and to hold everything together. And I decided to make sure that this was as big as possible because all the gardening books say that you should make it as deep as possible for certain vegetables. And you can make it a smaller one if you really like to for other ones. Look up whatever it is, I don't know exactly, but I wanted to make it as deep as possible. And this is just me putting it together, which was kind of a pain since I was doing this all on my own and it was really hard to make sure that everything was level and I wanted to make sure I could actually get it inside of the gate because if I constructed this outside of the gate, it was definitely not gonna get in here um, on my own. So I had to put it in there and then I realized how big this thing was starting to be and how heavy it was. Um, also, these are the planks that I used uh, that were on top of her deck and started to realize that these are not very sturdy in, in that process that I was doing this. Also, it's a four by eight structure, so I had to put support. It's so great when you have neighbors that do all the hard work for you at the perfect time because I need to fill up this uh, box over. I have a bunch of sticks and crap to do it with. And now I don't have to spend that much money on topsoil. This was such a great find and that my neighbor did this because finding filler is the most expensive part now, of this remember, whole project. I'm doing this because I don't want to spend that much money on fill and you could just get fill from anywhere, your grass, your hay, sticks, and my neighbor had a great little thing. So luckily we raised chickens over here. And I got their winter house over here, and for the summertime, I put them in here. We have all our grass clippings and a bunch of fertilizer that's, again, completely free. I'd have to say this is the least fun part of the whole thing, is basically shoveling out chicken poop and all of their glass, grass clippings. And I probably should have been wearing a mask with, uh, with all the stuff just flying up in the air. I definitely had to uh, blow my nose after this, let me tell you. It was quite ridiculous. And then here, I'm just using that next layer to fill it up. So now that we got that layer on of fertilizer basically from the chickens, the hay, the grass, all of that, I'm gonna get the next layer from underneath it, which is some dirt that's been cultivating for uh, two years and it's got a lot of good worms in it. Quiggly guys doing their job. It was a definite mistake to not dig out that plot of land underneath it before I started doing this whole project. And this is where you need to save the money because by the time I got six bags of soil, these plants, it cost me $100. From everything that I've learned in gardening is that you need to have good soil. So I kind of didn't need to spend the money on this soil, but at the same time, I felt like let's give this the best chance it could possibly have and get it some really good soil. And what we got going on over here is some bell peppers, then some jalapenos, and then the third row is going to be some kale. And this is all for my wife because she really likes this stuff, but then the next one's rosemary for my steaks because rosemary is so amazing on steak. Here you have it, this is my raised garden bed. I'm um, not too happy with it, but I'm you know decently happy with it. I wish I did a lot more planning. I had to put this like line thing underneath because my kids went right underneath it. And frankly, I don't trust the way that I built it. Uh, so there were some definite supports that I should have made. I put under a lot of stuff. I actually banged in a bunch of supports underneath and it's still kind of bottomed out because there's a lot more weight in here than I realized. And I wish I did a lot more planning. So don't follow my instructions. Follow somebody who knows what they're doing.